Hi folks, hope you're okay today. Uh, I just want to talk about um, the Trinity and how to defend the Trinity. Um, I'm going to, uh, this is from Matt Slick, so if you want the, the paper, you can go on Calm Apologetics and you can download the paper. Uh, so, yeah. So that's calm apologetics on the Trinity. Um, so I'm just going to just talk about the Trinity. Um, my website's jasonburnspreacher.com. So, number one. Uh, Matt 6 says, God is the only supreme being in all existence, places and time. He is holy, Revelation chapter 4 verse 8. Eternal, Isaiah chapter 15, uh, ch Isaiah 57 chapter 57 verse 15. He is omnipotent, Jeremiah 32 verse 17 to 27. Omnipresent, Psalm 119 verse 7 to 12. Omniscient, 1 John 3.20 God is love, John 4.8.16 God is light, 1 John 1.5 1 John 1.5 God is spirit, John chapter 4 verse 24 God is truth, Psalm 117.2 And God is creator, Isaiah 40 verse 12 Isaiah 40 verse 22 and Isaiah verse 40, chapter 40, verse 26. He is to be worshipped. So let's go to Genesis 24, 26. Genesis um, 24, 26. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. Exodus 4.31 And the people believed, and when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he had looted upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. And you can go to 2 Chronicles 29, 28, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 25, and Revelations chapter 7 verse 11. Now Matt Slick says Christianity is monotheistic, monotheistic, only one God in existence anywhere, anytime. So if we go to Isaiah 43.10, Isaiah 43 verse 10. Ye are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. And you could read later on, at the uh, verse 12, uh, saith the Lord, that I am God. So God is one. And we can read, I'll read some verses that Matt Slick gives. Um, Isaiah 43 10 You are my witnesses declares the Lord and my servant whom I have chosen in order that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me there was no God formed and there will be none after me Isaiah 44 verse 6 Thus says the Lord the King of Israel and his Redeemer the Lord of hosts I am the first and I am the last and there is no God beside me Isaiah 44 verse 8, Do not tremble and do not be afraid. Have I not long since announced it to you and declared it? Are you my witnesses? Is there any God beside me? Or is there any other rock I know of none? Isaiah 45 verse 5, I am the Lord and there is no other. Beside me there is no God. Now Matt Slick says this, The Trinity is one God who exists simultaneously in three persons. 
each co-equal, co-power, co-eternal with, with the other. Each person, Father, Son and Holy Spirit is not the other. Without either there is no God. All compromise the one God. I'll read that again. The Trinity is one God who exists simultaneously in three persons. Each is co-equal, co-powerful, co-eternal with the other. Each person, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, is not the other. Without either there is no God, all compromise, com comprise the one God. The analogy of the Trinity with time, for example, we have the past is, is distinct from the present, which is distinct, distinct from the future. Each is simultaneous. Yet they are not three times, but one. That is, they all share the same nature, time. Trinitarian verses, Matthew 28, verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 and 6. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of ministries and the same Lord. There are a variety of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Objections to the Trinity answered, says Metzli. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. Just because the word Trinity is not in the Bible doesn't mean the concept is not taught. The word monotheism, or one God, is not in the Bible. Yet the Bible teaches it. Therefore your criticism is invalid. The Trinity is illogical. What law of logic is it that the Trinity of violates? If you cannot tell me, then your statement is meaningless. Say it is illogical does not mean it is. The Trinity is pagan. Saying it's pagan means nothing. The question is whether or not it is biblical. Are these verses that show Father, Son and Holy Spirit are each God, each indwell, each have a will, each loves? Yes, there are. Father, Son and Holy Spirit are called God. Philippians 1, 2. John chapter 1 verse 1, Colossians chapter 2 verse 9, Acts chapter 5 verse 3 and 4. Each of the persons has a will. Luke chapter 22, 42, Luke 22, 42, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 11. Each is all knowing, 1 John 3, 20, John 16, 30. John 21, 17, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Regarding the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, each has a will. Luke 22, 42, Luke 22, 42, 1 Corinthians 12, 11. Each speaks. Father, Matthew 3, 17. Spirit, Luke chapter 5, verse 20. 20 and Spirit Acts 8, 29, 32. So that's just a little uh, introduction to the Trinity. You can get the paper um, from Calm Apologetics, Matt Slip. It's a very helpful paper if you're ever going down to Hyde Park, you can put it in your Bible, just print it off, put it in your Bible and you've got the information there when you go down to Hyde Park. So this is a, 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 a four-part series of equipping you to defend the Trinity. Okay, so we've looked at just some basic information about the Trinity and now we're going to look at uh, some more detail from another paper. Alright, God bless you. Don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com.